What a monster. What a nice guy as well. Love, love, love casting some Fahad games. Okay, let's get into this. So, first of all, Fahad versus Khaled. Yeah, so this one was played a week ago, and then the Moxie game was played um, today. So, this is a week ago against Khaled. Fahad doesn't have the best history in this matchup. Khaled has, you know, beaten him, I think, every time they've played against each other in tournaments, but in ranked, Fahad has been on an absolute tear recently, so looking to get some revenge here. NA just F will F fly underscore alley. <laughs> I love that. NA just fly is such a good comment. <laughs> NA just fly, I guess. Yeah, Khaled running with the name K these days. Um, he, was, well, he, he was going with just the letter K for a while. He changed it to K-A-Y. Great 50 by Fahad there. Khaled famously able to dominate 50s in many a matchup, but Fahad knows exactly how Khaled plays. He knows that he's got to get dead behind the ball in every single one. Good read there by Fahad, predicting Khaled's first touch and shutting it down immediately. And again, it's able to predict that Khaled is not interested in making a quick move on the ball. Khaled, of course, prefers to get much closer to the net before shooting. So 2-0, Fahad, early challenging with great success. NRG got stomped so hard by BDS, they started laughing as a coping mechanism. I don't think they were doing it as a coping mechanism. I think they were just uh, trying to stay positive. I think they were just trying to have a good time because when you're in these grand finals, you know, you got to enjoy it. Winning is obviously the main objective, but these are amazing experiences for these players. And, uh, you know, to wait two years for a LAN and make the grand finals are really great result for anyone um, so I, I'm sure they just wanted to have a good time and enjoy themselves while they were um, in that final but yeah also from listening to Sid's explanation of NRG um, and their thought process during the grand final it sounded like they just had a really realistic view of how the final was going they knew that they were up against a team who were better on the day and playing some Unreal Rocket League so they were just happy to you know be in that final and make, make as good of a match of it as they could and yeah, it did make them play better as well. When NRG started talking and laughing more, they were, they were playing a lot better. So, makes sense. Some nice little touch there by Fahad to buy him some time. Khaled opening up a brilliant angle to shoot with, but lacking power on the shot and accuracy a bit too high. Of course, sometimes when you do clip the ball a bit too high, you're going to lose a bit of power. Mind game by Fahad. Exquisite. Effective as well. He does so well to keep chances alive. I noticed this from casting a show matches today that Fahad turns very awkward positions into quick shots on net extremely well. It's a quality that many a you know top ones player have been able to have in the past but in this matchup it's usually Khaled who does that in moments like this where he just, you know quickly turns around moves towards the net before you can react. Am I going to be commentating and streaming the tournament tomorrow? If you're talking about the um, Monaco tournament, then no. Um, I will not be commentating that. Probably won't be streaming it because I don't know if anyone's allowed to uh, stream it. Does anyone know what time that Monaco gaming show is on? Because I definitely want to watch it. That was a great save by Fahad there. Careless um, first touch by Khaled to just give away possession. It's rare to see him just give away possession for free like that. He usually will dribble all the way back to his own half rather than do that. A very like, you know, very high pressure game here for both players. They are not leaving the ball. <laughs> they are just on the ball whenever they can be, giving each other absolutely no space. Khaled deciding to go for the boost seal here and the bump, but Fahad shrugs it off. Transitions into a wall shot and Khaled not getting back. Surprised to see this. Thought Khaled would be able to recover there. Fahad has just been a bit quicker to the punch in this game. Yeah, he's going to get the boost as well. It's been just perfect boost management by Fahad for the most part. He, he's okay backing off. He doesn't mind running away if he has to. But that might be just game. It is. Fahad puts the open net on target and Khaled actually forfeits. I didn't pause this. That's an FF. Khaled waited to see if the open net was on target. This is what he saw here. 
So he's got no boost, and he tries to challenge. Fahad cuts it around him, but Khaled waits to make sure that he's actually scoring the open net, because a lot of players will miss those wide open nets, as we've seen today. And uh, he wanted to see what the result was going to be before going next. Great game there by, uh, by Fahad. Not uncomfortable um, playing against Khaled's style, which is, you know, it's how I would describe playing against Khaled. We've seen it from so many players in recent time. You run against uh, this guy and you just don't know, you don't look like yourself. But Fahad, he's played against Khaled a ton. He knows what to expect. In this game, he uh, had his number. So he came out pretty strongly on top. Oh, sorry, OSM. Was I roasting open nets again? Hold on. Let me get into the next one here. There's one more game that um, Fahad sent me to watch. I, w I actually wasn't thinking about you, OSM, when I said that. I genuinely wasn't. I mean, I, I, when I say some players, I do mean some players. There's a lot of players who will uh, miss that open net. So, Fahad against Moxie. Moxie's been sitting rank one pretty much all season. And uh, this is a game from today. I believe it might be the game that actually got Fahad rank one from Moxie. It's pretty cool when you can actually have that rank one versus rank two match for the title. And I'm sure if both players keep grinding, we're going to see more um, matches like this where the title could change hands. The rank could change hands, I should say. Oh, that's a great challenge by Moxie. Uh, it looks like he's recovering though. Wow, what a touch. So he's actually managed to keep control here. That's kind of what I was talking about before, where, uh, you know, where Fahad just... He's in these awkward positions, but he gets such soft touches on the ball to just keep control of it. Keep the play alive. Moxie, clinical from distance. Where's Moxie from? He's from France. And Fahad is from Saudi Arabia, so... Two of the best 1v1 countries here. I think the uh, only countries you can really put in the same conversation would be England... Um, Probably America as well. You know, Netherlands have Jory is historically also on as well, but definitely not as many. Um, you know, there's just a, the, the sheer volume of insane ones players from France, England, uh, well, you could say UK as well to include Scrub in that. France, UK, KSA, USA, they're the they're the countries with the just the most the biggest number of one beyond players. We're insane. Fahad is so confident with his shooting, it's ridiculous. Like, he just doesn't hesitate. Open nets. He was double tapping them today. Show matches. And you can see that that's such a valuable skill for ranked to just be confident in the basics. Um, especially when you're playing hours on end and when you're trying to get really, really high in the ranks, you need that consistency. Fahad's really got that in spades. Yeah, both these matchups, well, so far the, you know, the Moxie matchups playing out fairly similarly to the Khaled one. I mean, if you showed this, like, if I hit the nameplates and I showed these games to, you know, random Rocket League players around the world, they might completely guess the wrong rank. Like, some people might look at this and think that we're looking at, you know, Champ 2 or Champ 3 or, you know, maybe well, maybe that's a bit too low. Maybe like Grand Champ 2 or Grand Champ 3, they wouldn't realize that we're actually watching Rank 1 versus Rank 2. The reason being, you're not seeing tons of crazy mechanics in these games. You're not seeing wall shots, uh, you know, or rather, wall setups for air dribbles and flip reset plays, ceiling shots, double taps. Like, these things aren't really as much of a factor in matchups where both players are so happy just pressuring the ball all game long. Um, Moxie slotting an equalizer there, good job. Had time, but the angle was becoming tougher and tougher. Who's the best 1v1 player is Prime? I think like the the GOAT for 1v1 is Fairy Peak, but the, the boat, the best of all time is Jari is. Like the player who's reached the absolute highest, the peak of 1v1 so far. Jory is, is the boat. And then probably second boat would be uh, Khaled, I would say. And then probably Jack. I'd say they're the top three boats. It's a five all. Almost exactly halftime here. Yeah, they're the holy trinity of boats. Boats, that's best of all time. 
to players who have reached the highest like peak ability um, for 1v1. That's my top three boats. Top three goats would be Fairy Peak, Scrub Killer, and then number three is actually a bit of a tricky one. Ooh! Look at the classic cut in field followed by the backflip flick. The Marky Duda special for your RLCS Season 1. I know the Scrub Killer special, diagonal kickoff in your net. <laughs> Fahad bringing back all the OG moves here. Jack doesn't really have the results to back it up. I mean, Jack has um, a ton of top four finishes in tournaments, which, you know, aren't wins like Khaled and Jorius have, but he's, you know, losing to players who are going on to win these tournaments. And also, Jack was part of, I think, the highest level show match that's ever happened. It was actually not even a show match. It was just a, uh, it's kind of a, between a show match and a tournament. The smug match against Jorius, that was the best series ever played, in my opinion. Um, so, you know, you, I think Jack belongs in the boat conversation, but he's, he's third, I'd say. He's third. Not sure who third goat would be, though. Not sure who third goat would be. Uh-oh. Moxie, that's not the ball. What a shot by Fahad, man. He absolutely slams open nets. This is insane. Like, every single one just boomed in. No hesitation. Absolutely dominates. The kickoffs have really gone his way. 11-5. What has happened in this game? It was 5-5 like 50 seconds ago or something. Or 40 seconds maybe. Who's the GOAT in threes? Um, Tarbo. And then KDOT. Second. And then third probably Garrett G. Oh, it's a bit unlucky by Moxie there. Good try. He's going to stay in this, because, you know, your opponent scored six goals in 40 seconds. There's more than 40 seconds left, so maybe he can make this happen. But yeah, Three's Boats. Who do you guys think are the Three's Boats? If Three's Goats are Turbo and K-Dop, obviously, maybe Garrett G is third. Who um, do you guys think the Three's Boats are? I think the Boats are obviously Monkey Moon. Um... Like, it's tough to say, like I said Jorias for me was one of the top two players at the LAN and you know you'd have to say that that LAN is the highest quality of threes ever played on LAN because so much time has passed since the last one. However, oh that's going to be a forfeit there from uh, Moxie, not a badly timed one either. He's definitely at a time and there's going to be another goal. So Faha just insane right now, he's just so confident, so consistent. You can clearly see that the reason he's got rank one is just ridiculous consistency and you know that ability to come back under pressure against insanely mechanical opponents that we saw in show matches today definitely helps as well um but yeah moxie has been sitting rank one for most of the season i'm sure he'll get it back at some point um he's only won well if he beats fahad once he'd get it back um wouldn't be surprised to see Khaled and napjack climbing up there jory is also actually playing ranked it's unusual see how the uh the rank one battle gets on later in the season it's gonna be interesting to watch